up today on The Mum Show, we're going to be talking about raising boys. And I've got life coach and mum of three boys, April Joy Sarant, joining us today to give us some of her tips. So get comfortable and let's get started. <laughs> Another episode of The Mum Show. I'm here again in the Mum Show kitchen with play therapist Emma Brown, Pastor Claire Hooper, and a very special guest today. We have April Joy Sarant. You're back again. Yay. We've had you here before and we're so glad you came back. And today we're going to be talking about raising our boys, how to raise boys into strong, solid mm. men of God. Mm. So glad that we're doing this topic because I've got a little boy. Yeah. And you've got three, so you're going to give me some of that wisdom that I need. Is that okay? Absolutely. <laughs> so I'd like to open up a question first of all to you all. Do you think there is a difference between raising a boy and raising a girl? And I've just realised I'm the only one that's doing both. Mm. Would you like the answer? Oh, wow. <laughs> I am. Oh, you are. Yeah. Claire, you're ahead of me. Go for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is. But there's just differences in raising different human beings. Mm. But there are definitely some differences. I bet there's some brain in that as well, brain science, um, in, in what you need to, how you need to nature and nurture them for sure. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there is brain science to do with kind of the differences between males and females and the male brain and the female brain. But I think what, what's for this, for the purpose of this episode, what feels really important is how do we raise our boys um, in a way that is perhaps against what, how society and the kind mm. of the culture that we live in now expects from our boys and men. Mm. Because, you know, from my perspective, I, I haven't got sons. Um, I've got daughters. And I'm not, I haven't got brothers either. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not coming at it from that mm. angle, but I do work with a lot of uh, young men. Uh, and, and actually in terms of um, the, the difficulties that I see in our teenage boys and how they mm. struggle to express themselves. Um, and, I, and I feel like that is really in part about the kind of expectations that are on mm. men from, from the society. I think the expectation is for, for boys uh, and, it, and it gets fed through social media and TV yeah. and film I think we're expecting our boys to be um, kind of you know men who don't really um, aren't comfortable showing emotion they don't men should keep kind of their feelings to themselves they shouldn't mm -hmm. express themselves they should be self-reliant uh, I think we get a lot of aggressive kind of images and and things that come across through mm -hmm. through um, film um, mm -hmm. and and other you know video games and things yeah. like that and I think it's a, I think it's a real problem yeah. certainly when we look at um, you know, um, the kind of the impact on, on mm. young men's mental health. Mm. Um, you know, That's it's, huge, isn't it? There's a huge yeah. statistic on the number of men and young men that, yeah. that struggle with mental health. Yeah, and, and actually, in terms of, it's, it's the, biggest, the biggest killer of young men, uh, and men in general, actually, is suicide. And we have to kind of take that really seriously. In fact, it's, it's three times, men are three times as likely to kind of end, actually kind of end their lives through suicide than, than females are. Yeah. And I do feel that that is in part to do with the expectation on men mm. to not go there, to not have mm. to talk about their feelings, yeah. to kind of not acknowledge what's going mm. on internally for them. It feels yeah. like a big, a big issue. Do you think, and I absolutely agree with what you're saying, and I see that, um, like for Ruben, my little boy, for instance, I noticed that if I want to buy them both stationery, Lilia has something that's a really pleasing colour, that's a really nice eye palette, that's, that's going to inspire creativity. I don't know if you've noticed, but the boys, it's kind of... It just feels really dark and gloomy and boring and or silly. Yeah. Yeah. It's never anything <laughs> like it's got to be something ridiculous yeah. or it's got to be something. Do you find that when you're shopping for your boys at all? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I definitely think that we put them in this box where, yeah, yeah. where stuff is silly or very aggressive. Yeah. And it's, like it's hard to, it's, I find that as a mum, I find that really hard to tolerate mm. sometimes because, and I went into one shop and I was just like, this isn't acceptable. Talk to whoever makes your stationery <laughs> because my little boy, I want him to have a positive association. Mm. 
to drawing and writing and expressing yeah. himself and you're taking that away from him because his sister has got this amazing kit and you're making all this stuff and, and the truth is he doesn't want a pink and pale blue fluffy yeah. glittery. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't want that. So it's nothing yeah. to do with yeah. me saying boys can't have pink yeah. fluff. Yeah. He doesn't want pink yeah. fluff. Yeah. He would yeah. throw it across the room. Yeah. But do you think, you know, you were saying about how boys open up differently or, or they're not opening up. I sometimes wonder, do, do you think boys have a different language at times? Yeah, I think that what I'm saying is that we shouldn't, I'm not saying that we should raise our boys exactly the same way that we raise our girls. Yeah, no. oh, yeah. Because there are, you know, there's physiological, there's, there's, there's kind of internal, there's brain differences, there's chemical differences between males and females, and they should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. Those differences should be celebrated. But, the, but, but I, I suppose what, where, where, where I'm coming from is, is that we, we, it's the way, it's the expectations that we have on boys that feels different. Mm. The expectation that they, they don't talk mm. to each other, yeah. they, don't, they don't open up, they don't kind of tune into themselves, they mm. don't, that, you know, that they haven't really necessarily learned a language of what, what they're, you know, all the different emotions yeah. that they mm. feel. Um, and we've, you know, we've seen on some of these episodes some of these episodes um, have really been really encouraging to me because we've seen young boys who have who have yeah. clearly had a different yeah. experience yeah. where they've had parents that have really kind of fostered mm. um, you know those those qualities of compassion and empathy mm. in their boys and they've yeah. not they've not been afraid to do so and I think we absolutely all night all need to take responsibility as parents to try and instill that in our yeah. boys mm. okay. I think you're right we in our family we we tell them what uh, Reuben what a gentleman is <laughs> Yeah, we, and we always say we yeah. always go. Oh, gentlemen always do yeah. this, and gentlemen always do that. Yeah. And um, and he will and he will say it back again. He'll go. Oh, that was so gentlemanly of me, wasn't it? Wow. But it isn't what other people. What it isn't what traditionally yeah. is said yeah. is gentlemanly, but it's actually things like when he's able to express himself. Yeah. So if he comes over to me and says, "Mummy, I feel left out." then I would say, oh, that was such a gentlemanly thing to do, to tell me that rather than get angry. Yeah. And it's, it's, you have to be quite intentional, don't you? Do you find yeah. that? Yeah, absolutely. And the, you've got to keep the conversation going. Yeah. I, I don't have girls, I just have three mm. boys, but I am a girl. <laughs> and I know girls love to talk. Sometimes boys aren't as talkative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I've often found that, that with intent, I have to keep the conversation going. Mm. And actually, yeah. my mum told me years ago, evening time she often found for my older brother was a time when stuff would trickle out yeah and so she would always say to me just make sure your ears to the ground make sure you're there make sure you're not too busy make sure there's not too much on yeah because stuff sometimes trickles out and I do find that when yeah. my boys come out of school how is your day fine gone yeah yeah, yeah they don't want to talk too much about it but throughout the evening, as the night goes on, stuff trickles out. Oh, yeah. this happened. Oh, he wasn't kind. Somebody said this. And, and often I think our society, as mums, we can be so busy. Yeah. We sometimes forget to be really aware because yeah. they do have stuff to say and they do have emotions playing yeah. out as much as somebody who expresses them in a really, mm. you know, expressionate yeah, way. They do have emotions. Sometimes we just maybe have to tune into them a little mm. bit differently. Yeah. Definitely. It's being intentional about that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and creating a, a home where it, the, it, where there's an environment where it's it's um, there's permission to talk, yeah. so it's mm. really welcomed and celebrated to be able to yeah. kind of have those discussions and to talk about feelings because actually, you know, we the only thing that we can control really is what goes on in our mm. homes. We yeah. can't control, you know, the, the environment of school potentially perhaps isn't as mm. safe a place for boys to yeah. feel that they can talk about how mm. they feel. Yeah. Um, but so it's so if as long as we're kind of creating an environment at home where they can do that, I think that's a really good starting point. Yeah. And it's really important they learn to process with a woman, which is why mums are so valuable to boys because yeah. they're going to spend their lives with a woman. Yeah. And if they can't learn to articulate themselves with a woman now, they're going to really struggle when they bump into having a wife who they're trying to communicate yeah. to and maybe then walk into that and don't know what to do because it's so different than what yeah. they experienced. It's not always just let dad deal with that. Oh, we'll let dad, oh, when dad gets home, we'll deal yeah. with that. It's learning to process life mm -hmm. with you and you, you're training him and coaching him. This is how a woman thinks. This is how a woman behaves. It's yeah. like a, 
from the moment that your boys are born, you're helping them, you pay it forward to their future wives. Yeah. You're helping to think about everything, the skills that you give them, yeah. the mm -hmm. approaches, the filters that they do life with, the thoughts that they have towards women, how they treat women mm -hmm. as their, you know, to teach them to treat them as their younger sister and their, you know, and, and to treat women well. And mm -hmm. it, that is our job. Yeah, that absolutely. is our job yeah. as mums. And I find that really interesting, Claire, because you've got a daughter as well. Mm -hmm. And you have to manage that dynamic Definitely. as well, don't you? Because there are the differences, like the traditional differences. Mm. They do aggressive things for boys because men, by their nature, are strong and powerful. Mm. And women, by their nature, you know, we're, we're different. And like mm. you say, girls can often like to talk. We can yeah. be very verbal. And I can't ignore those differences mm -hmm. between my son and daughter. And so sometimes I've had to say to them, like I'll say to my little boy, who is strong mm. and he's younger than her, but he's really mm. powerful and he will grow taller than her because she's a little. Yeah. Like. And I say to him, use your power to help, not hurt, mm. you know, and so use good. your words to build yes, kindness. Yourself, and because yeah. you just know that, yeah. that these things are going to come up. Mm. Yeah. You, April, did you find, because when, um, I don't know what you've done about toys with them growing up, mm -hmm. but I've been very proactive with my, mine are all, my boys are old now, 15 mm -hmm. and 18, but when they were little I was very proactive in including just toys, non-gender specific, yeah, so they did have so prams awesome. and dressing up clothes and they did have um, dolls and they did have small world play, they did have all of that and they did play with those mm -hmm. things, but they just did it in a very different way yeah. and I never yeah. tried to manipulate yeah. the way they wanted to play, so they would have a doll's pram, but there's no way they'd put a baby in it, they put each other in it and push each yeah. other around, <laughs> drag, push each other into the walls, yes. or then they had small world play, they had Sylvanian families and they had little dolls and things, it wasn't just boy small world play, yeah. I brought in into their life, that variety that girls have that gives them sometimes the, you know, the, the articulation, language. a different yeah. language, and it develops yeah. their language about family units. And they had their own narrative that they created, yeah. but it was really healthy, and I've seen the benefit of that now when they're able to speak and articulate with different groups of people when they're older. Really yeah. recommend it. Do you do yeah. that with your boys? Yeah, absolutely. Although, so thinking on that line, they do have a range of toys, but no matter how lovely or cute the toy is, if it's in the hands of my boys, it's often smashed yeah. and crushed and <laughs> thrown apart and apart yeah. yeah. explored. Sometimes they just pull things apart, see how they work because, and put them back together. Yeah. Or, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But still expose them, yeah? yeah? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. My little boy, he's got, um, if my daughter's playing with dolls and he wants to play with her, he'll always be the taxi driver. <laughs> And I pick them all up. It's like, I'm here, come on, on my bus, right on you get. And they all get on. And I'm like, that's just hilarious. Yeah. But he's always like a Formula One taxi driver. Yeah. <laughs> and he flies them round the room <laughs> as fast as he can. But, I, but it's like you say, Clay, you have to, don't yeah. you? have yeah. to not feel like they've, they, they're going to do it anyway. Yeah. 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 They're going to rough and tumble. They are yeah. going to fight. They yeah. are going to shout. They're going to do all those things that boys love yeah. to do. Yeah. Because I th it's true, isn't it, that they have different... There, there is, but I but there is always, you know, I don't want us to kind of get into a place of pigeonholing yeah, boys. Absolutely. Because there are boys that are much more kind of, I guess, in, more in touch with their femininity and, yeah, kind of, you know, that part of their brain. We kind of think of it in left and right um, hemispheres and, mm -hmm. and, you know, boys tend tend to, to lean towards the, le the left being more dominant. So the left brain is, is the logic, you know, think of L for, for kind of logic. Mm -hmm. um, so problem solving, mathematical, you know, the kind of scientific, mathematical yeah. language. Um, and then the right brain is much more the kind of creative side uh, and, and links much more to the emotional um, part. So, so yes, we, 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 our brains are, are, have got both sides. There tends to be one slightly more dominant than the other. Um, but equally, some, mm. some boys and some men yeah. are much more yeah. um, right, right brain dominant. Yeah. Um, but they then struggle with their own, they have their own struggles of, yeah. you know, I, kind of I, maybe I should be more like mm. this, yeah. Yeah. but I'm not. Uh, I know that my husband, he's, um, you know, he's, he's six foot tall. He works in, within the prison service. He looks, you know, he looks quite scary at times. I remember <laughs> when we first um, started going out and we'd go shopping, um, I was wondering why the security guards were always following us around the <laughs> shop. So I'm like, hang on a minute. And then I realised it's because of him. So anyway, he's, you know, he's a bit older now, so we don't, we don't really have that problem anymore. Um, but um, so the perception of him is that he's a blokey bloke, mm. but actually 
He's not really into sport. He's never really liked kind of football or anything like that. Total giant. Yeah, <laughs> he's, but he's much, you he know, loves. people will walk into our house and say, oh, I love all, the, you know, the kind of ornaments or the soft furnishings yeah, yeah. or the pictures. And they assume it's me. Yeah. And it isn't, it's him. Um, and he has love a much that. more, he's much more in touch with yeah, that part of, yeah. part of his brain. And, you know, thankfully we've had two girls, so he's been able to yeah. kind of really go with that. Um, but I think we just yeah. need to be careful that, yes, there yeah. are mm. tendencies, but we also, you know, bring up boys who are, who are, you know, kind of much more, I suppose, um, that way leaning and much more yeah. open to that We side reflect of Jesus, don't we? Absolutely. But what ticks me off, can I just say, because I don't say that very often, don't I think, is the way sometimes people in church pigeonhole people. Yeah. And this is the version yeah. of Jesus that we want our men to be. Every church does yeah. it differently. Yeah. We want the meek and mild Jesus in this church. Yeah. Yeah. We want, oh, no, no, no. We want the Jesus that can preach really well in this church. Yeah. We want this. And like, Jesus did, he went into, ta he turned tables over, he fashioned whips, he like, was really strong and direct mm. with people. Then he bent down and he healed people and then he spoke to people in different ways and he was risk taking and then he was, then he cared for people's needs by feeding them. I'm like, that is just, that, I mean, that's personhood, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. that is mankind and I think we've just got to get off the bus on trying to say that we want this version, our man or men in the church mm. to be this version of Jesus and this version only. And if yeah. you're not, then you're not good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so that's damaging. Just, yeah. 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 That's what that's breeds so much <laughs> anxiety, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Is that I need to fit in here, but somehow that's yeah. just so far where I am. But I think if you look, I find it really amusing when you look across the expanse of the Bible, of the Word of God. Like, can you imagine King David with his poetry playing and his dancing and his flamboyance <laughs> yeah. and his building, hanging out with Peter, yeah. Rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. who's aggressive and lobbing a man's yeah. ear off. What you know, doing, David? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put the instrument down and get over here. <laughs> you know, but it's like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they're all being used in all of these yeah. really yeah. different ways and you've got every colour and yeah. reflection. And, and that comes back to the thought, doesn't it? Like, as a society, are we catering for a whole boy mm -hmm. or are we saying, You've got to look yeah. like this. Yeah. Give the boy a nice notepad. Yeah. Just going to come <laughs> yeah. back to that. Yeah. I think we need to question ourselves as mums. What is what? You know, one of the, some of the questions that we can ask ourselves. What you know? What kind of man do we do we want our, our son mm. to grow up to be? Mm. What kind? What kind? Of, what 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 do we value? Mm. What are the qualities in men that we value? Mm. Yeah. And like maybe kind of question our idea or ideal yeah. of, of what a man is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and really, so it starts with us again, doesn't it? As it always does. Yeah, but always. Kind of really, kind of, you know, take time to reflect on what is it that I really value in a man, mm. and is that is that is that my son, and and how do I kind of bridge the gap between my expectations mm. for for a, for a boy or a man, and actually, you know, what what what's my what's what's the reality of what my son has in, inside of him? Yeah. And mm. there, there may not be, you know, it may not be completely the same. It's important yeah. for us to question that, yeah. I think. Should we have a listen to the kids? Yes. We've got a great cracking group of boys for this one. So let's, let's have a listen to what they have to say. And action. The best thing about being a boy is I always get to um, go outside a lot. All your friends, which are boys, like the same thing. You can chat about the same thing, which you both like. So what do you do with your friends that are boys? We build dens. Yes, we, sometimes in the forest we build like teepees out of sticks. It can be, well, very disorganised and I'm kind of sometimes depended on to pick the game. When we finally stop arguing and pick a game that we all like, it can it'd be a lot more fun than just when we're alone. Alfie, what do you think boys are good at? Well, they're quite good at playing. What three words would you love people to say about you? You're very good at football and <laughs> very sporty. Fish. That's a lot more than three words, Vika. Do you think there's anything boys find tricky? I find tricky sitting still for quite long and um, quiet. Like 60 minutes. Uh, uh, otherwise, then I start getting really, really fidgety and trying to slip away. Is there anything that you think the world needs to know about boys? Anything you think, oh, if only they understood that better? For wood, I just really don't like being like, underestimated, un like, 
because I don't know much, but I do know some things, and I don't want to be treated like I don't know them. Everyone's special, like you can't say someone's a WMP when you don't even know that they are or not. And um, boys aren't better than girls, they're just the same. Um, what do you think are some of the kind words to describe boys, good words that describe boys? I'd like to say that we both try to be kind, we both try to be gentle, even if I am too rough, even if I um, am not gentle, even if I, it seems like I'm being a bit mean, I'm doing my best not to be. That's something I'd like people to know about me. Why do you think God made boys? In the Bible, it gives men the job of protecting their family and take the hard things for other people who can't take them and to, well, love him because that's why he made all people. I think it's because we, we can trust them, not animals, with um, girls and that so, so some people can know that God is alive. Alfie? Oh, I really think the same as Josh. There's so much wisdom, don't you think, oh, between them? I actually felt there was a lot of vulnerability yeah. in that one as well, which I found really interesting because there wasn't in other topics mm. with the same children. It was interesting, yeah. I think what Joshua was saying about kind of um, what what what's the man's role is is to protect, mm. um, and that I was I got a sense of that overwhelming sense of responsibility mm. that I think boys have yeah. to kind of have to be tough. They have yeah. to kind of hold it together because it, the book stops mm. with them somehow. Yeah. And if they can't kind of hold it together, if they can't be tough, then then what's going to happen? Yeah. Uh, some of the young people or young boys or young men that I that I work with often find themselves in a position where they either feel that they have to be a victim or they feel that they have to be in that bully position it's kind of like the either or position and often they flip between the two it's like it's the only way I can escape feeling this kind of feeling vulnerable or, or you know being potentially victimized is to become the bully yeah. and actually what I work I spend a lot of time trying to find uh, the middle ground with boys mm. how can they how can they learn to kind of know themselves and um, be comfortable with themselves enough to kind of say what it is that they need. Mm. So express their needs, express their feelings and, and needs, but doing it in a kind of respectful way, mm. um, which doesn't put them, or doesn't polarize their position. It doesn't make them a victim, but equally it doesn't make them the aggressive bully yeah. either. Mm. It's a real challenge for boys, I think. It's really powerful, is. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Did they said, I think Joshua as well, um, well, all of them, there seemed to be a tussle of feeling misunderstood. Yeah. And you were talking a lot about how you would communicate with your boys and listen in the evenings. And I'm really curious because they're not always, boys are not always easy to kind of yeah. get talking and things. Do you have any strategies to get your boys talking? You know, I, I find for me with my own children, and I, I spent quite a long time working with kids from quite disadvantaged families, the girls I would take out for coffee and would have coffee and cake. Do you know what I used to do with the boys? I used to take them to wash my car. <laughs> Not for them to wash my car. We would both get scrubbers yeah. and we would begin to wash the car and as we were doing something, yeah. stuff would start to that's tumble so out. That's so matches true. God's word yeah. though, because in the beginning, that's what man was created for, to take care yeah. of the surroundings of God's earth. And then when the fall happened, it became work and toil, which is why men fall into that, because that was not God's plan for yeah. it to be toil and work yeah. and toil and work. Mm. But it was to have a sense of significance and importance mm. in the yeah. doing. Yeah. And then that's why then you fast forward and Jesus says, oh, well, sorry, Paul says that um, men are supposed to submit and uh, love their wives like Christ loved the church yeah. to lay down their life for yeah. them because he knows the tendency would be to take it all on himself mm -hmm. and to like shoulder it all. But in actual fact, he's supposed to just kneel and come to his wife in service to her yeah. to use his strength for service. Yeah. Wow. From the beginning to the end. Yeah. That yeah. just makes total sense why in the natural that would work. Yeah.
I love that. I, I think I, I think you're right as well. The distraction sometimes as well yeah. really helps, doesn't yeah. it? Mm. I found it interesting because my little boy had really missed me, mm. and I'd been I'd been away and I'd been working really hard, and he'd been really difficult for my parents who were looking after him. Um, it hadn't been difficult for me when he was seeing me because we weren't getting to see enough of each other for a few days. But when I walked in to see him, he ran over, he gave me a cuddle and then he ran away, giggling. And then he came back and threw something at me and he ran. <laughs> and I was like, this is like a puppy right now. Yes. But his language at that point wasn't, oh, mommy, I missed you so much, which is what my daughter was saying. Yeah. Mommy, I missed you so much. I just wanted to chat to you. Let me tell you everything that's happened. My little boy was like, tag your it yeah. seriously yeah. let's do this and there felt like there was so much communicating going on rolling over the top of my back snuggling into my cheeks tickling my tummy getting me to tickle and blow on him and all these different yeah. things and it didn't feel as though um he was lacking conversation it just felt like it was different. feeling yeah. really different there as well yeah, yeah. such a tenderness that in there and that's mm. yeah yeah, and that always can be really tender, can't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. But absolutely. what I, I think that's beautiful to kind of foster that in, in yeah. you know, that relationship between, particularly between uh, you know, a mother and son, because yeah. the fathers often get the chance to do all the kind yeah. of, you know, yeah. the kind of play fighting yeah. and the rough and tumble. But to allow to have that physical intimacy between a mother and son is yeah. really important because it's life, like we say, it's life skilling yeah. them up, isn't yeah. it? It's teaching them how yeah. to be tender and how to yeah. be nurturing and. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that will absolutely have an impact, a positive impact on their future relationships. Mm. And, and you've done that a lot, because I think this is quite important, actually, because you've done that, gone to lots of work. I, to keep that, you know, that communication open, my oldest son was, is never as much wanted to be close. He was much more playful and wanted to do things, but I've just fostered a, a different, not a weird need, but I'll just sometimes say to him, you know, Judah, can we have a? Can you come and give your mum a hug? Come and sit with me. Tell me about your day. And I found ways of doing that. But whereas my youngest son still really wants that time with me. But we'll do daft things. We'll dance together. Mm -hmm. Or we'll go on the trampoline together. Yeah. Or we'll go on a bike ride together. Like we were out for a, an hour long bike ride only a few days ago. We'll do that together. Mm -hmm. And he will stop and he'll help me. And he's it's helped him to be very tender yeah. towards me and hopefully then towards other women. Mm -hmm. But I want. I know that they're going to care for me in my old age. I'm hopefully not thinking too far ahead, <laughs> but you've got to do the work now yeah. Yeah. in your relationship and creating that connection with yeah. them that's not like treating them like they're just boys and mm. oh, get out of the house, get out of the way, you're under my feet, which is also very easy to do yeah. when they're all around the place and whirlwinds and wanting mm. your attention. It's like sometimes you put everything down, you fill a whole load of water bombs, yeah. don't you? Yeah. And you get outside with them so, and you're like, I am going to win. Yeah. <laughs> I do that regularly. <laughs> I am going to win. <laughs> My football skills have massively improved yeah. as well. I, and, and for me, uh, often I, I just take myself out to the garden and kick a football. Yeah. And it's not what I would naturally do at all. But I just get in their world. And yeah. I think, like you said, yeah. connection. Mm. I think that is key. So I'm, from I, the smallest I age. seek it out. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm always looking from the day when I, how can yeah. I connect with you. I do not go a day. I try not to, especially yeah. with the boys. <gasps> I yeah. think just at the end of that video, I'm going to say one last thing so we're going to go, but just at the end of that video, did you notice what the little Alfie said at the answer to his question? I think whatever Joshua just said. <laughs> and I think when we're raising boys, if there's one thing we could really seek out, if they haven't necessarily got a dad or a mm. granddad, strong men. Yeah, absolutely. Strong men around yeah. them. We see yeah. that. And I love that Paul and Timothy relationship. Mm -hmm. I love that relationship of Jesus and the disciples. Yeah. I love those relationships in the Bible. And we've got to go there sometimes, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. April, thank you. Yeah. It's been so great having you in. Really we have pleasure. really appreciated it once again. And thank you guys for tuning in as well. We're going to be back in the Mum Show kitchen very, very soon. And we hope to see you there. Bye for now. Hello, parents. Don't forget to say hello. We're at forestcollective.co.uk. Bye.